Hello Thrivers, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about four mixed messages that all narcissistic parents wind up teaching their children. And the reason I want to talk about this is because honestly, I wish when I was a teenager, I wish I had understood the connection between narcissistic abuse and complex PTSD. So at some point I learned about Actually, I wish I had understood that what narcissistic abuse really meant. But my point is, is that so many people grew up in these dynamics and now they're understanding that their parent was a narcissist, right? Or they're understanding malignant manipulation. They're out of the house of their parents, but they're still struggling. So in this video, I want to just break it down as to what these mixed messages do to a person and how it affects you when you become an adult. Okay, so what are those mixed messages? And, and when I refer to these messages, what I'm really talking about are things that should come naturally from parents. They aren't things that you need to be taught. They just are innate inside of us. Okay, you think about animals. Animals have instinct as to how to take care of their children. Well, humans, we have innate emotions towards our children. We have innate um, feelings and beliefs as to how we should be with our children. I didn't have the best role models in my life, but nobody had to tell me, you know, this is how you should feel about your children, or this is how you should treat your children. A lot of it comes naturally. Now, obviously there are things we need to learn and do better, but I just wanna say that a lot comes naturally. And for example, the first message that should be just a given is the fact that your parents have your back. As a child, if you are being hurt by somebody or if somebody is mistreating you, a child will naturally want to run to their parents if they have that safe upbringing. They know that even if no one else appreciates them, no one else loves them, they know that their parents are a source of love and acceptance, right? And that they're going to be there for you if you're suffering. It's something that just comes naturally from a, a loving parent. I know that in my case, if somebody insulted me, okay, or disrespected me or mistreated me, I wouldn't like it. It would hurt to an extent, but it's not gonna you know, alter me in any way. But were somebody to disrespect or hurt my, or insult my child, I don't know, a switch goes off and this defense kicks on, right? This automatic defense kicks on. In fact, I think when my children were small, they wished that defense wasn't quite so strong but it's just a natural thing that we have our kids back. We are gonna make sure that they're taken care of. We are gonna make sure that nobody hurts them. We're gonna care about their feelings. I say that this is the first mixed message because a narcissistic parent will tell their children how much they care. They will tell their children that they have their back, but their words and reality are never on the same page. So, something will happen, the child will need emotional support, right? So you go to the person that has your back and the narcissistic parent will blame the child for what happened, will make them feel shame as if it's their fault that it happened, or do something that leaves that child alone dealing with the external problem and without any emotional support from their parent. Okay, but the parent will swear and, and will tell everyone in the world how much they are there for you. But at the moments you need them, they're not. The second mixed message is whatever they tell you is for your own good. Any advice they give you, it's because they care. Now, again, this is a fundamental message, right? As parents, everything we do tell our children should be because it's for their best, even when they don't like it. For example, in the case with my son, right? He's at an age where he's on his technology and there are limits and rules. And sometimes he doesn't like those rules because as a typical teenager, he wants to be on his technology longer than is, is good for him but those rules help him 
to stay safe when it comes to technology. So when he's upset, I can tell him, you know, the reason we have these rules is because I care. If I didn't care, I would let you do whatever you wanted because life would be so easy, right? So the rules are because I care. And he can reason and see that, which is good. <laughs> but the problem with narcissistic parents is that their rules don't make sense, but they are said in the same way. They are said and presented to a child as if I'm doing this or I'm asking this of you because I care and because it's what's best for you. And I say that this is a mixed message because a lot of what a narcissistic parent requires of their children is not what's best for them. For example, a narcissistic parent will want their children to be, think, and feel whatever they need them to be, think, or feel. And if they come with this logic of, well, I'm just telling you that it's for your best. This is why I'm saying you need to think this way. This is why you need to feel this way. The child starts divorcing pieces of their authentic self in order to please that parent. So remember, authenticity is not allowed from narcissistic parents. You can't be your authentic self. You have to be what that parent needs. You have to reflect them in some way all the time. Any, any evidence of authenticity is taken as a threat by a narcissistic parent. So again, that message, I'm telling you this for your best, meanwhile I'm asking that you divorce your authenticity, it's a mixed message that is very confusing. Parents know better. Now, technically this is true, right? Parents do know better, they've lived longer. However, I can't tell you how often in my face-to-face uh, -face coaching I've had clients tell me, Michelle, even when I was small, and I mean elementary years, five, six, seven, I knew something was wrong with my parent. But because every time I tried to explain it or point it out, because I was made to feel bad for those perceptions, because I was made to feel bad for calling them out, life got really confusing and I didn't know left from right. It's almost amazing how when we look back, for anyone that's an adult child of narcissistic abuse, when you look back, you can spot those times in your childhood where you knew in your gut, you knew something was off with your parent. But because they could explain themselves in such a way that was so logically seemingly normal it caused you to lose it caused you to doubt that perception or to just kind of stop trusting your own perception one therapist that helped me in the very beginning stages of my journey i'll never forget he told me he's like michelle narcissists are expert manipulators he said they can tell you that the wall behind me that's white is they can tell you that it's yellow. And by the end of the conversation, if you don't see that wall as yellow, you will leave the conversation wondering if you have something wrong with your eyes. That's how well they know how to manipulate your perspective. So even though a child has that gut instinct that something's wrong, unfortunately, the gaslighting and the expert manipulation cause the child to lose contact or trust with their inner gut instinct. And the fourth fundamental truth that uh, becomes a mixed message to children is that parents love their children unconditionally. Right, that's a given. We should love our children no matter what they look like, no matter how many mistakes they make, no matter what struggles they have, no matter if they have an illness, a physical, a mental, emotional illness, parents love their children no matter what. Well, unfortunately, again, a narcissistic parent will say that, but their actions show something completely different. For example, they will reward you or they will make you think that you, they love you when you are acting, being, thinking, feeling what makes them happy or what serves them. But the second you're out of alignment with them, 
they punish you. They punish you with anger, with a look of contempt, with disdain, or they put shame inside of you. So you quickly learn, if I want to keep my parents' love, I have to do and be a certain way. Or I have to make sure to not be this or that. Which unfortunately, the this or that is usually your authentic self. Okay, so those are the mixed messages. So what happens as a result of these mixed messages? Well, when I first tried driving in Mexico, under the rules that I thought, you know, we were supposed to abide by because they have the same, the same rules, right? Stop signs, lights. Um, I almost got into so many accidents. If I stopped at a stop sign where I wasn't really supposed to stop, the guy behind me slammed on his brakes and I almost got rear-ended. I had to learn how to think like them, right? In order to drive like them and avoid accidents. That's okay for that scenario, right? Because thinking like them on the road didn't change or alter who I was as a person. But a, a child of narcissistic parents has to start thinking like them in the sense that they're like, what does mom or dad need or want? What do I have to do to make sure that they love me? What do I have to do to make sure they, they're not angry? And those thoughts become constant thoughts. They become r your rumination. They become what you live day after day after day. So you're never really living, you're never really being. You are constantly on eggshells in childhood trying to figure out the rules and when they apply or why they changed or what to do to just feel safe. A child that lives like that has an unstable reality. They have an unstable view of what relationships are like. And what I've seen happen is that somewhere along the way, especially the past 10 or 15 years where information is so much more readily available, thankfully young ones are starting to realize and notice what's going on in, in their family. And many of them leave. The problem is, is that sometimes we think that leaving the toxic person is what's needed. And obviously not being in that environment is going to help you to heal. But leaving alone is not going to heal the wounds and the side effects of, of what was lived. So some of those challenges are the fact that, and this is, again, this is what I see a lot in adult children of narcissistic abuse in my face-to-face -face coaching and in my Thriver School of Transformation, um, they struggle with a sense of identity. They're stuck in people-pleasing mode, right? Because that's what they were taught. You have to please, you have to do in order to be accepted or loved. They find themselves drawn to emotionally unavailable people because that's what they experienced in childhood. That pattern, until it's broken, until you work through it, that pattern will stay alive and you'll find yourself in the same kinds of situations until you break that pattern. They battle shame, social anxiety, and so many other side effects that are the result of narcissistic parents. So my point is, is that if you're an adult child of narcissistic parents and you've learned about the narcissist and maybe they're not even in your life, but you're still battling these side effects, you might, and again, I can't diagnose anybody, but you might have complex PTSD. And until you understand that, you could be stuck in symptom management for years I've seen people stuck in symptom management for decades. So I encourage you to look into whatever you can that can help you to break through complex PTSD. If you wanna check out any resources that I have available, I'll leave the link to my website above. If not my resources, any other resources, my point is find something that resonates with you and start putting the focus on you and on working through these side effects so that you can be your authentic self what was not permitted in childhood, which was wrong to deny you of, you can get back to that. You just might need some help to get there.